Welcome to the XMAP and Teleflex System Maintenance Overview. Introduction To ensure accurate test results, it is essential to clean and maintain your XMAP and Teleflex system regularly. For example, daily system maintenance includes checking the fluid levels in addition to running the daily performance verification and shutdown routines. Along with calibrating the system, Weekly maintenance tasks include running the weekly maintenance and remove clog routines, cleaning the sample probe, and conducting a visual inspection of the system. Additionally, monthly, semi-annual, annual, and as-needed maintenance is required. Luminex recommends duplicating the XMAP IntelliFlex maintenance log from the XMAP IntelliFlex user manual or system quick guide and using it for documenting and monitoring system maintenance activities. In this video, we will present the typical order in which most customers perform these activities. Nevertheless, you are encouraged to customize the workflow to suit your laboratory's requirements, while still ensuring that all tasks are adequately fulfilled. The purpose of this overview video is to guide you through the essential procedures to effectively clean and maintain your XMAP and Teleflex system. Let's begin with performing a visual inspection. Perform a visual inspection. You should inspect your XMAP and Teleflex system weekly. To perform the visual inspection, make sure the instrument is idle so there are no moving parts. Remove the front cover. Visually inspect for leaks, corrosion, and other signs of improper function. Check all visible tubing connections. Replace the front cover. Check the fluid levels. To prevent startup issues, monitor fluid levels daily before powering on the system. If the XMAP and Teleflex system operates without an adequate amount of sheath fluid plus in the container, it will cause a disruption in sample acquisition, preventing further sample collection. A quick way to determine if the sheath fluid container needs to be replaced is by gently moving the container. Simply give the container a gentle shake or kick, and if it moves easily, consider replacing the container. Replenish the XMAP Sheath Fluid Plus as needed. To replace the Sheath Fluid Plus, unscrew the cap and remove the intake line. Remove the empty Sheath Fluid Plus container and replace it with a new Sheath Fluid Plus container. The empty container can be used as the new Waste Fluid container. Replace the Sheath Fluid Plus intake line, ensuring the filter is near the bottom of the container. Note, do not touch the filter on the intake line. Screw on the cap. Additionally, it is important to manually monitor the waste fluid levels. Before using the system, ensure that the waste container has sufficient capacity and is not close to overflowing. Each time you replace or refill the XMAP Sheath Fluid Plus container, remember to empty the waste fluid container. To empty the waste fluid container, remove the waste line from the container. Discard the waste from the waste fluid container in accordance with lab protocols. Attach the waste line to the new empty waste fluid container. Warm up the lasers. The lasers automatically begin warming up when you turn the system power on. However, you will need to warm up the lasers if the system is idle for four hours or longer. The lasers take approximately 30 minutes to warm up. To warm up the lasers, fully expand the dashboard. Select the laser button to start the laser warm up. Once successfully warmed up, the laser status displays a timeout countdown. Select the laser button to reset the countdown timer to four hours. Calibrate the sample probe height. The purpose of calibrating the sample probe height is to ensure proper sample acquisition for new plate types prior to system maintenance, after cleaning or replacing the sample probe, or as part of troubleshooting. Ensure there is no liquid or samples in the wells or reservoirs before calibrating the sample probe height. 
failure to do so will result in inaccurate probe height calibrations due to the system interpreting the liquid level as the bottom of the plate or reservoir. After logging into the system, eject the plate carrier and remove any previously installed microtiter plates. Position the off-plate reagent block on the carrier and place a single replacement strip well in the center row. Strip wells are provided with the calibration and performance verification kits. Note, the off-plate reagent block is notched and can only be installed in one direction. Place a plate on the plate carrier with A1 in the top left corner. Verify no liquid is present in the designated plate, strip well, or off-plate reservoir. Based on the type of plate being used, place the appropriate alignment disc in the specified well position using the following guidelines. Note, alignment discs are only required for 96 well filter or mylar plates. If you are using 384 well mylar or filter bottom plates, we will discuss the alternative probe height calibration method later. Retract the plate carrier. Select the software navigation menu in the upper left hand corner of the screen and navigate to maintenance probe height. Select new, then select either a 96 or 384 well plate size. Optionally, enter a description for the plate. Press auto calibrate. The sample probe automatically adjusts to the well and saves the reading of each calibration. Select Save As and enter the name of the plate. The saved calibration is now available for selection from the Saved Plates drop-down menu. Note, if a saved plate is chosen, the results of any new probe height calibrations will override the previously saved calibration. Sample probe calibrations are saved separately for each of the three sections, plates, reservoirs, and off-plate strips. Ensure all three are calibrated. Note, wait until the system finishes automatically calibrating the sample probe height in each section before selecting Auto Calibrate in the next section. 384 well filter and mylar plates. To optimize the performance of 384 well filter or mylar bottom plates, do not install the 384 well filter or mylar bottom plate on the plate carrier. Instead, follow these steps to calibrate the sample probe height. Use the data sheet for your plate to calculate the probe height. To do this, subtract the well depth from the plate height and add the desired probe clearance from the well bottom, as shown in this example. This is the desired distance from the plate carrier tray for the probe height to be adjusted to. Note. Round the calculated probe height to the nearest tenth of a millimeter. Confirm that a plate is not installed on the plate carrier. If a plate is installed on the plate carrier, remove the plate and retract the plate carrier. Select New to create a new plate type. Select the 384 well plate option. Press Auto Calibrate in the plate section. The sample probe automatically adjusts to the plate carrier tray and saves the reading for the probe height. Select Save As and enter a name for the plate. Select the Probe Up-Down button. Use the manual adjustment buttons in the plate section to set the distance from the bottom to the value calculated in the previous step. The distance from the bottom may be manually adjusted in 0.1 millimeter increments by increasing or decreasing the offset value using the arrows. Select Save. A message is displayed indicating the plate type was saved. To delete a plate, select the desired plate to delete from the Saved Plates drop-down and select Delete from the Plates section. Probe height calibration is now complete. Run the Revive from Storage routine. For best results, Luminex recommends running Revive from Storage in combination with the Prepare for Storage routine prior to periods where the system will not be in use for more than a week. The Prepare for Storage routine will be covered later in the video. Revive from Storage prepares system fluidics when the system is being used for the first time or has remained inactive for over a week. 
The revive from storage routine takes approximately 20 minutes to complete. To prepare the XMAP and Teleflex system for use after long-term storage, ensure sufficient XMAP Sheath Food Plus is available for instrument use. Remove the parafilm from the sample probe. Turn on the XMAP and Teleflex system. Select Revive after storage. Eject the plate carrier. Fill the reservoirs indicated in the plate layout of the software 3 quarters full of deionized water and 3 quarters full of 70% isopropanol or 70% ethanol. Verify that the waste reservoir indicated in the plate layout is empty. Retract the plate carrier. Select Run. A message displays stating that the maintenance routine was completed successfully. Calibrate and verify the system. Prior to calibrating or verifying the instrument, it is necessary to import a set of target values that are specific to each reagent lot. This can be done by scanning the target values barcode that comes with each XMAP and Teleflex calibration or performance verification kit. Navigate to Maintenance CalVer. Select the Run CalVer tab on the left navigation bar. Select Import Kit from the top of the screen. Select Scan. Scan the barcode on the calibration or performance verification kit target value card using the integrated barcode reader located below the touchscreen. A message displays stating the kit lot imported successfully. If a readable barcode is not detected, the scanner will time out and the dialog will close automatically. Note, an error message is displayed if the lots were previously imported. Replacement barcodes for the calibration or performance verification kits can be obtained from Luminex's XMAP and Teleflex website and then printed or scanned using a mobile phone screen. Use the XMAP and Teleflex calibration kit to calibrate the system. Following calibration, use the XMAP and Teleflex performance verification kit to check all of the optical channels in the system for correct calibration. Be sure to verify every time you calibrate. If there is a problem with the optical alignment or fluidics, the XMAP and Teleflex system may pass calibration but fail performance verification. Calibrate the system at least once a week and run performance verification daily. The XMAP and Teleflex system will notify you when it is time to recalibrate and the dashboard displays the current calibration status. In addition, recalibrate the system if any of the following occur. The delta calibration temperature exceeds plus or minus 5 degrees Celsius. The instrument is moved. You experience sample acquisition problems. The instrument undergoes hardware maintenance, such as replacement of a part. Activate the correct reagent lot numbers for your calibration and performance verification kits by choosing from the drop-down menus. Note. The lot number in the drop-down menu will match the lot number on the reagent bottle. If any of the lots are expired, the system will allow you to run the expired lots, but will prompt you to confirm and note the lot expiration in the system log. Select the Run checkboxes for Calibration, Performance Verification, and Fluidics. Note, after calibration, always perform verification. Fluidics can be run as part of the calibration and performance verification procedures or as a standalone procedure. Eject the plate carrier. Place a single clean strip well in the top row of the off-plate reagent block. Note, the plate layout in the software indicates reagent locations. Fill the appropriate reservoirs 3 quarters full of deionized water and 3 quarters full of 70% isopropanol or 70% ethanol.
Gently Vortex All Calibration and Performance Verification Kit Reagents for 10 seconds each to ensure homogeneity. Do not dilute any of the reagents. Completely invert the bottle and add six full drops per well of each calibration and performance verification reagent to the appropriate location on the strip well. Note, check the label on the bottles to ensure that you are dispensing the correct reagents. Retract the plate carrier. Select Run. Note, if you request to run calibration before the lasers are warmed up, the instrument will wait until the lasers are ready before calibrating the system. Common causes of calibration and verification failures include insufficient mixing of the vials, incorrect placement of reagents in the strip wells, and incorrect kit lot value selections. Run the daily startup routine. Please note that if the system has already undergone calibration or verification, there is no need to run the daily startup routine again as it is automatically run during calibration and verification. Navigate to Maintenance Routines. Select Daily Startup from the Maintenance Cleaning Commands. Eject the plate carrier. Fill the reservoirs indicated in the plate layout 3 quarters full of deionized water and 3 quarters full of 70% isopropanol or 70% ethanol. Retract the plate carrier. Select Run. A message displays stating the maintenance routine completed successfully. Run the daily shutdown routine. Run the daily shutdown routine to prevent clogs and crystallization of salt in the fluidics lines. Clogs and crystallization of salt in the sample probe can cause problems with calibration, verification, and sample acquisition. They can also cause sample splashing. Perform the daily shutdown routine to prevent system failures. Navigate to maintenance routines. Select Daily Shutdown. Eject the plate carrier. Fill the reservoirs indicated in the plate layout 3 quarters full of deionized water and 3 quarters full of 10% bleach. Note, 10% bleach is defined as 0.6% to 0.8% sodium hypochlorite with no additives. Additives can lead to buildup causing high background. Retract the plate carrier. Select Run. A message displays stating the maintenance routine completed successfully. Run the Remove Clogs routine. If you frequently use the XMAP and Teleflex system to test concentrated serum or other debris-ridden samples, Luminex recommends that you run a weekly clog removal routine. Otherwise, perform this procedure as needed. Navigate to Maintenance Routines. Select Remove Clog. Eject the plate carrier. Fill the reservoirs indicated in the plate layout 3 quarters full of deionized water and 3 quarters full of 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide. Warning. Sodium hydroxide is extremely caustic. If it comes into contact with skin, it can burn and cause tissue damage without causing pain. Always wear gloves and goggles when working with sodium hydroxide. Verify that the waste reservoir indicated in the plate layout is empty. Retract the plate carrier and select Run. A message displays stating that the maintenance routine has completed successfully. Run the weekly maintenance routine. Luminex recommends running this routine on a weekly basis to keep the fluidic lines clean. Navigate to Maintenance Routines. Select Weekly Maintenance. Eject the plate carrier. Fill the reservoirs indicated in the plate layout 3 quarters full of deionized water and 3 quarters full of 70% isopropanol or 70% ethanol. 
verify that the waste reservoir indicated in the plate layout is empty. Retract the plate carrier. Select Run. A message displays stating the maintenance routine completed successfully. Run the Prepare for Storage routine. Prepare for Storage prepares and cleans the system for storage. Luminex recommends running this routine when the system will be idle for more than a week. To prepare the XMAP and Teleflex system for long-term storage, navigate to Maintenance Routines. Select Prepare for Storage. Eject the plate carrier. Fill the reservoirs indicated in the plate layout of the software three quarters full of deionized water and three quarters full of 10% bleach. Note, 10% bleach is defined as 0.6% to 0.8% sodium hypochlorite with no additives. Retract the plate carrier. Select Run. A message displays stating the maintenance routine was completed successfully. Turn off the XMAP and Teleflex system and unplug the power cord. Remove the sample probe from the instrument. To remove the sample probe, open the sliding front access door of the XMAP and Teleflex instrument. Unscrew the sample probe fitting on top of the sample probe completely. Grasp the sample probe gently and push up. Lift the sample probe out of the top of the sample probe holder. Flush the sample probe with DI water from the narrow end out through the larger end. Dry the interior and exterior of the sample probe by either placing the narrow end of the sample probe in a syringe filled with air and forcing air through the sample probe or by allowing the sample probe to air dry overnight. Wrap the narrowest section of the sample probe with parafilm. Replace the sample probe and tighten the fitting. Power off the system. Note, if the daily shutdown routine has not been run on the maintenance routines page, run this routine before shutting down the system. Eject the plate carrier and remove the plate and any bulk reagents from the instrument. Push the soft power button located on the right side of the instrument. Note, pressing and holding the soft power button will force the instrument to shut down. Only press and hold the soft power button if the soft shutdown is not responding. Select yes to confirm the shutdown. Note, as needed, perform a hard power shutdown by turning off the hard power switch located on the back of the instrument and unplugging the instrument. A hard power shutdown may be required during troubleshooting or maintenance. Clean the sample probe. To clean the sample probe, turn off the XMAP and Teleflex system and unplug the power cord. To remove the sample probe, open the sliding front access door of the XMAP and Teleflex instrument. Unscrew the fitting on top of the sample probe completely. Grasp the sample probe gently and push up. Lift the sample probe out of the top of the sample probe holder. Clean the sample probe using a bath sonicator or a 10 milliliter syringe. If you are using a bath sonicator, place the tip of the sample probe in the bath sonicator for two to five minutes of water flowing through the sample probe. If you are using a syringe, force deionized water through the tip of the sample probe and out the large end. This will dislodge any debris clogging the tip. Place the sample probe into the sample probe holder. Grasp the sample probe gently and pull it down. Tightly screw in the sample probe fitting on top of the sample probe. Close the sliding front access door. Note, calibrate the sample probe height anytime the sample probe is reinstalled after removal. Plug in the power cord and turn on the XMAP and Teleflex system. Monthly maintenance. Clean the exterior surfaces. To clean the exterior surfaces, turn off the XMAP and Teleflex system and unplug the power cord. 
Clean all exterior surfaces with a mild detergent, followed by 10% bleach, followed by deionized water. Avoid contact with tubing and electronic parts of the instrument. Note, 10% bleach is defined as 0.6% to 0.8% sodium hypochlorite with no additives. Plug in the power cord and turn on the XMAP IntelliFlex system. Semi-annual maintenance. Replace the HEPA filter. To replace the HEPA filter, turn off the XMAP IntelliFlex system and unplug the power cord. Remove the front cover. Locate the HEPA filter on the front panel of the fluidics module. Tubing from the interior of the fluidics module is attached to the stem in the center back of the filter. Remove the two black thumb screws that secure the HEPA filter to the panel. Grasp the tubing and pull the HEPA filter three to four inches from the panel. Securely hold the tubing with one hand and remove the HEPA filter with the other hand. Warning, do not allow the tubing to fall inside the system. Connect a new HEPA filter to the tubing and position the filter. Replace and tighten the two black thumb screws that secure the HEPA filter to the panel. Note, avoid pinching the sample lines between the HEPA filter and the panel. Replace the front cover. Plug in the power cord and turn on the XMAP IntelliFlex system. Replace the syringes. To replace each syringe, turn off the XMAP IntelliFlex system and unplug the power cord. Warning, the syringe arm does not deactivate when replacing the syringe. Unplugging is necessary to avoid injury. Remove the front cover. Locate the syringe. Loosen the set screw on the syringe arm and push the syringe arm down. Note, the syringe arm is tight. Be prepared to use some force to move it. Unscrew the syringe arm from the valve by turning the top housing. Remove the syringe and discard in accordance with lab policies. Screw the top housing of the new syringe back into the valve. Return the syringe arm to its original position. The bottom of the plunger fits into the indentation in the syringe arm. Hand tighten the set screw on the syringe arm. Plug in the power cord and turn on the XMAP IntelliFlex system. Watching for any leaks in the syringe area, run two prime commands using the system software. Replace the front cover. Replace the sheath end tubing. Turn off the XMAP and Teleflex system and unplug the power cord. Disconnect the sheath end tubing using the blue connector from the external tubing coming out from underneath the instrument by pushing down on the metal clamps at the quick disconnect point. And screw the cap from the top of the XMAP Sheath Fluid Plus container. Pull out the remaining tubing with the filter and discard in accordance with lab protocols. Insert the new cap tubing with filter into the XMAP Sheath Fluid Plus container and tighten the cap. Connect the new sheath in tubing to the external tubing coming out from underneath the instrument. Note, a click snap is heard when the tubing is properly connected. Plug in the power cord and turn on the XMAP IntelliFlex system. Run two prime commands using the system software. Annual maintenance. Please contact Luminex Technical Support to schedule your 12-month preventative maintenance. This service includes replacement or cleaning of your filters by one of our qualified field service engineers. As needed maintenance. Replace the sheath filter. 
Based on guidance from Luminex technical support, you may need to replace the sheath filter outside the annual maintenance performed by a field service engineer. To replace the sheath filter, turn off the XMAP and Teleflex system and unplug the power cord. Remove the front cover. Locate the sheath filter on the front of the Fluidics module. Disconnect the sheath filter by pushing down on the metal clamps at each quick disconnect point. Connect the new sheath filter, matching up the color-coded fittings. Replace the front cover. Plug in the power cord and turn on the XMAP and Teleflex system. Run two prime commands using the system software. This concludes the XMAP and Teleflex system maintenance overview. Thank you for your time and attention.